welcome. I'm sorry. The rhythm is going to get you. Please have a seat, everybody. Welcome. Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. And... It is Rosh Hashanah, Lashana Tova, everybody. Happy New Year to all my Jewish viewers. It's gonna be a great year. It's gonna be a great year. It's gonna be a great year. 5783, that's a prime number. That's always lucky. <laughs> and I gotta say, 5783 is often an interesting start because this evening, a NASA spacecraft deliberately hit an asteroid head on at 15,000 miles per hour. This is to see whether space rocks can be deflected away from Earth. Now, <laughs> before you start having panic sex with strangers on the sidewalk, <laughs> I hope it's not because of this asteroid. Because <laughs> here's the thing, it wasn't, it wasn't the big civilization ender that Ben Affleck will have to save us from. It wasn't even headed for Earth. This was all just to see if NASA could push a potentially dangerous asteroid off course with Earth. The mission is called the Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART. <laughs> Not to be confused with the mission to stop a real asteroid that's gonna destroy the planet, the Spatial Hybrid Astronaut Redirection Technique, or <laughs> SHART. <laughs> now, we, I think that's what it's oh, called. Oh, oh. I don't know why. We recorded this show... Yes, we recorded this show earlier, so we don't know how the impact went. But on the slim chance that this asteroid was not accidentally redirected into a collision course with Earth, and we're now all clinging to chunks of continental shelf drifting toward the sun, if that does not happen, there will be another January 6th hearing this Wednesday. And we got... We got, the, we got the inside dope on some of the committee's findings last night on 60 Minutes, or as I've been told not to call it, TikTok. <laughs> Correspondent Bill Whitaker sat down with former senior technical advisor for the January 6th committee and six year old who was allowed to choose their first and last name, <laughs> Denver Riggleman. Riggleman revealed just how closely connected the administration was to the rioters on January 6th. Do you get a real aha moment when you see that the White House switchboard had connected to a rioter's phone while it's happening? That's a big, pretty big aha moment. An aha moment? Well, maybe the ha will come eventually. Right now, I'm stuck on the ha! Ah! 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 <laughs> we don't know. We do not yet know. We don't know who made the call, right? From the White House. We don't know who made the call, but we do know that the call lasted for only nine seconds. So, probably a prank call. <laughs> Is your refrigerator running? <laughs> well, then you better catch Mike Pence and hang him. <laughs> the hearings, <laughs> speaking of which, it's rarely. It's rare. Allegedly. It's rare. <laughs> Speaking of which, the hearings are clearly getting under the skin of former President Pillsbury, duh, boy. <laughs> In a new tell-all from the New York Times' Maggie Haberman, the former president tries to set the record straight about his behavior during the insurrection, saying, I was not watching television on January 6th. Really? Really? <laughs> You're accused of inciting an angry mob to storm the Capitol to prevent the peaceful transfer of power for the first time in our nation's history. And that's the part of the testimony you're taking issue with? Your Honor, I stand her accused of killing that drifter last September. But I categorically deny I was wearing white pants. It was after Labor Day. <laughs> I'm a murderer, not a monster. How dare you? How? How dare you? The former president also said other things uh, to Haberman, including this anecdote about running for president. The question I get asked more than any other question, if you had to do it again, would you have done it? Okay, that's clearly a lie. The question he gets asked more than any other is, do you want fries with that? 
The answer is yes. He continued. The answer is, yeah, I think so, because here's the way I look at it. I have so many rich friends, and nobody knows who they are. Yep. The real presidency is the rich friends we made along the way. <laughs> also, I love she didn't ask him that. He asked himself that, and then answered himself. <laughs> A lot of times I'm asked what the main question I get asked is. That's a good question. Well, I tend to ask myself the thing people are asking the most, which is what question which gets questioned of me gets asked of me by me. Any questions? And, and... Thank you. Thank you. Haberman met with the former president in March of 2021 at Mar-a-Lago, which at the time was shut down due to a COVID outbreak, leaving him to this stunning conclusion. COVID, he says, as he described the club's closure, turns out not good. <laughs> March of 2021, a year in, half a million Americans dead, but what really sold this dingus on a pandemic not being good was that he had to shut down his special clubhouse where well-to-do orthodontists clap for him as he eats chocolate cake. <laughs> Here's another section of the book. Not good. Not good. <laughs> Over in not America, yesterday, Italy held an election, and the big winner was ultra-conservative member of parliament and stage mom who needs you to do the dance like we practiced. <laughs> Georgia Maloney. Maloney's victory has a lot of folks worried because she's set to be Italy's most far-right prime minister since Mussolini. <laughs> Yikers. <laughs> Explains why Stanley Tucci's changing the name of his show to maybe I'll search for Belgium for a while. <laughs> I like waffles. <laughs> they, have, they have waffles, they right? Have waffles That's it. They have waffles. <laughs> But the part that hurts the most for me personally is that Maloney, who leads a party that has often been described as neo-fascist, claims to be a big Tolkien fan who used to dress up as a hobbit. No! <laughs> no! Or as they say in Italian, no. <laughs> Don't you ruin the Lord of the Rings. No self-respecting adult dresses like a hobbit, unless they're on the cover of Entertainment Weekly. <laughs> Now, I get, I get why an Italian politician might like Tolkien. I mean, the trilogy is full of, of wonderful Italian characters. Are you a shaman, a pasta? Mamma mia! And, and you gotta love, you gotta love the soundtrack by Howard Shore. When you see a big guy flaming up in the sky, that's a Sauron. All right. When you see a shirt guy with one bunny, that's a Elron. But Maloney takes her fandom to the extreme, saying, I don't consider the Lord of the Rings fantasy, adding that to her, it's a sacred text. I've never said these words to anyone. But um, I think you're taking the Lord of the Rings too seriously. <laughs> Even worse, just... Tone it, tone it down. Pump the brakes there. Even worse, this isn't just confined to Maloney. Apparently, in Italy, the Lord of the Rings has been a central pillar of the hard right identity. No, no, fascists. <laughs> Lord of the Rings is not some sacred text for the far right. That's totally misunderstanding the words of Olmo, Lord of Waters, who chose Tour as his instrument to tell the elven king Turgon after the founding of the great kingdom of Gondolin, love not too well the work of thy hands and the devices of thy heart. Hey, hey! You get back here. You get back here. I work hard. I'm allowed to have hobbies. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I felt a great disturbance in the force because we just learned that James Earl Jones is retiring from the role of Darth Vader in Star Wars. He will now be playing Baby Yoda. <laughs> but don't worry. 
The voice of Darth Vader lives on because Jones has reportedly signed over the rights to his archival voice work. And now Disney has hired an AI firm to build Vader's voice from Jones's library of work. Okay, that is creepy. <laughs> okay, uh, due to all this new technology, Hollywood now be able to use artificial intelligence to make stars act from beyond the grave. Luckily, this only applies to people who have been recorded for thousands and thousands of, oh my God. <laughs> I, I, I want you, everyone to listen to me. If they try to do this to me, Please know that I love Paramount. They are America's favorite media conglomerate and have my permission to do whatever they want. And I mean that. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Sigourney Weaver and FBI star Zico Zaki. And when we come back, 